Welcome home! Yes, welcome home to everyone who are here today because we are a family of God. So we are family here in Lightcast Church Online. We are streaming here in New York City. Yes, welcome home again. My name is Pastora Michelle Ramirez and I'm the senior, uh, senior pastor, senior pastor's wife. Pastor Ronald Ramirez. Yes, going back to we are family here. <laughs> Our aim is to love one another, bless one another, share with one another, and help one another. Of course, forgive also and pray for one another. That's why we're a family here, right? Amen. And I am Kersey Mallorca. I am one of Pastor Michelle's primary leader and also the cell leader of Team Ablaze. So if you are tuning in right now, uh, don't forget to like, heart, 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 tag, and share this live stream. And if you are a cell leader, don't forget to tag your cell members. And don't forget also your friends and family so they will be hearing the word of God also today. Yes, <clears throat> let's keep on sharing this live stream sharing god's blessing indeed we have something great god has prepared something great for us so i pray and i hope and i encourage everyone let's not miss anyone right Amen. let's not miss your friends your family who will also 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 get this or have this blessings or enjoy this blessing mm -hmm. so today i want to uh if you're new to lightcast or someone just uh invited you or you're a first timer or uh, maybe you're just scrolling down and you see someone <laughs> share this live stream on their wall. You know what? It's not an accident. Lightcast Amen. Church International is not introducing any new religion. Or we're not promoting any religion here. But our aim, our goal is to lead everyone to the Lord Jesus Christ. To have a relationship. A An growing intimate. relationship. Intimate with a growing and intimate relationship with God. So again, welcome to Church Online here in Lightcast Church International. All right, now it's time to greet people. So we have 32 viewers. Wow, yeah. 32. Yes. Good morning. And then, good, good morning. Good morning, Tita Alice and Ate Lori Flores. Good morning. Hey, good evening, po. Good evening, Sister Flor Lori. And uh, Sister Sheila Maitzik is here. Good morning. Good morning. Tita Grace Apura, good morning. Yes, wow. I can see here also Tita Ati Ellen, Sister Ellen Mercado. So Enlightened Group is already here. Wow. Shout out, shout out. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Tita Emily is here also. And Tita Roger, good morning. Good morning. Wow. Team Safas, led, led by... Uh, our very own Ives Manalo is here. And me and also <laughs> and Karen Mallorca from Blog of Love. Blog of Love. Okay, Brother Emil and Spiritu. Hello, po. Good, Good evening. Morning. Good evening, John. Good morning, Ating. Yes. Good morning, Ating. Sister Leia, come on up. Tag your group. Share this to your group. Sister Leia Hillside. Come on. Good morning, Ate Rika and Ate Debbie. Good morning. Oh, Debbie's here. Good morning. And the Refresh Group, Sister Rika is here. And Maspeth. Shout out to Maspeth. Yes, Nico. Nico. <laughs> <laughs> Nico is here. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Tita Susan Russo. Good morning. And also the Overcomers. Overcomers. And I can see here Yen Yen or Lauren Handelero. The oh. team illuminate. <laughs> By the way, belated happy birthday to our sister Lani Hondolero. Yeah, belated birthday happy time. birthday. Oh. And advance happy birthday <laughs> <laughs> to Miss Kersey. Wow, <laughs> to one of my leaders here. She's uh, celebrating ber her birthday tomorrow. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> nawala siya. <laughs> uh, Brother Jonathan is here. Jonathan Bjorge from Team Ozone. Do we have any new names? Can you see any new names here? 
Mm, oh, oh, I see Ati Cecil Prades Salcedo. Good Yay, morning. Hi, yes. Good evening, Jensen, Singapore. And also Rose Valle. Wow, Rose Valle. Good, good morning or wherever you're at. Welcome to church online here in Lightcast. Alright, I see Santino. Good morning, Santi. And shout out to Team Palitao. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Who's here? Sister Milet. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember sis, uh, si Tita Milet. Um, it's her birthday today, November yes. 1st. Magkasunod kami. Happy birthday. <laughs> good, uh, happy birthday, Tita oh, Milet. Happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, Sister Senya. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good morning. To Mata Family. Will. Will Nabo. Good morning. Good morning Tito Boy, Good morning. Who's oh, Jing is here. Hi, Jing. Ay, na excited ako. <laughs> <laughs> Jing, good morning to you. Good morning. Who else? All right, we have 45 viewers right now and we have 22 shares. Don't forget to share this live stream, Paul, because this live stream will become a blessing to everyone who will watch it. And also, cell leaders again, don't forget to tag your cell members. Gising, gising. Let's keep on sharing this. Sharing this live stream to your friends, to your family. And also, if you're still eating your breakfast, uh, don't hurry. <laughs> okay, I don't want you to choke. But, uh, you know, it's start to, let's start to settle down. Let's start to prepare to worship the Lord today. Because He deserves everything. Amen. our all. So again, church, let's keep on tagging, let's keep on sharing this um, this live stream. Mm -hmm. And by the way, Kersey, I don't know if you're aware wow. that we have yes, <laughs> that we have uh, our the Philippines <laughs> had an experience, or I think they're still experiencing the super typhoon rolling. Yeah. So last night uh, we mm -hmm. prayed for it um, mm -hmm. during our Ignite 17, and um, mm -hmm. let's keep on. Yes, let's keep on uh, praying. You know, uh, a lot of devastation happened Amen. in different, mm -hmm. in some parts of the Philippines. So I hope, church, let's pray. Let's pray for yes. our kababayans. And speaking of Ignite, have, uh, 7.14, we will have our, our last, last night. Last, last night. night or yes. Last night tonight. So don't forget, Ignite 17. <clears throat> let's pray for this nation, especially for our upcoming election. All right, I see. <laughs> Yes. Tata Mama, shout out! Yan, to my future husband! Yeah! <laughs> From my future husband! Sabi nga, happy advanced birthday to my future wife, Kirsty! <laughs> Hi, Jake! Amen! Yes, here in Lanka. See, we are a family here. We celebrate one another. A birthday, wedding. Yes, we have our upcoming wedding too. So pray for our soon to be Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> Ramos. Oh, yeah. Jacob and Kirsten Ramos. So pray for them, church. Pray for them. Yes. Okay. Uh, hi, Kuya Dale and Ate Rebecca. Okay, Sister Fe is here. Ayan, 51 viewers. Let's bring it up. Up, Come up, on. up. Let's and we have 29 up. shares. Keep sharing po. Keep sharing. Keep sharing. Come on, <laughs> let's keep sharing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, congrats, Agad. Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> okay. Oh, Mama Sister Beth. Ali. Mama Beth is here. Good morning, Mama ah, Beth. Good morning, Mama Beth. Ayan. So again, um, no, wala daw voice mo anak. <laughs> Okay lang po. <laughs> it's okay to be you. <laughs> it's okay to express your emotions. <laughs> to express that joy. Yan, no? Si Christine Oliveros. Yon, your leader. Oh. <laughs> I did. Oh, Good yeah. morning. <laughs> yes. Oh, Tita Emily, shout out to H2O. Okay, again. Good morning. Welcome to church. Good evening. Welcome to Church Online.
Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. Now, church, let's pray. Lord, the Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you, Lord God, for today. Lord, thank you for this beautiful morning that you have given us, Lord God, to hear your word, Panginoon. And Lord, I am praying, Lord, for each and every one who are here tuning in, Lord God, for this um, worship service. I'm praying, Lord God, that you will forgive us for all of our sins. Cleanse us, Lord God, and help us, Lord God, to ready our hearts, our minds, Lord God, for your word. And I'm praying, Lord, that not, we're not just going to be hearers of your word, Lord God, but also doers. Lord, we just want to praise you and glorify your name. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, now church, let's all stand up and let's worship the Lord through music. All right, good morning, church. Once again, how are you guys doing? Um, it's, it's, uh, it's an honor uh, for us to be here weekly and uh, in front of, of you guys and uh, worshiping, leading the worship um, all for our Lord and Savior. All right? So join us as we sing. Uh, if you can um, stand wherever you are at and sing us as loud as you can. All right? Let's sing. Have you ever seen the wonder in the glimmer of her sight? As the eyes begin to open and the blindness meets the light. If you have so say, I see the world in light. I see the world in wonder. I see the world in life. Bursting in living color, I see the world your way, and I'm walking in the light. Have you ever seen a wonder in the earth's second life? Having come in out of waters with all one left behind. If you have so say, I see the world in light, I see the world in wonder, I see the world in life, bursting in living color, I see the world your way, and I'm walking in the light. I see the world in grace, I see the world in gospel, I see the world your way. And I'm walking in the light I'm walking in the wonder You're wondering a while To the wilderness to wander You have so say I see the world in love I see the world in freedom I see the Jesus way you're the wonder in the world I see the world your way I'm not afraid to follow I see the world your way I'm not ashamed to say so I see the Jesus way And I'm walking in the light Time sing, I see the world. I see the world your way. I'm not ashamed to follow. I see the world your way. I'm not ashamed to say so. I see the Jesus way. And I'm walking in the light. I see the world in life. I see the world in wonder. I see the world in life. First thing you live in color, I see the world you way. And I'm walking in the light. Ooh, I say, I see the world in grace, I see the world in gospel, I see the world you way. And I'm walking in the light. I'm walking in the wonder. Wondering a while, the willingness to wander. Well, I say, I see. 
see the world in love. I see the world in freedom. I see the Jesus way. And wonder in the wild. I see the world. I see the world. I see the world. I see the world, see the world your way. I'm not afraid to follow. I see the world your way. I'm not ashamed to say so. I see the Jesus way. And I'm walking in the light. sing still Lord Heavenly Father we just want to remember Lord God our uh, families Lord God our um, relatives our friends Lord God that's currently in the Philippines Father God that's being devastated Lord by the typhoon Father I pray Lord God you're going to be in their midst Father Lord as we said Lord God in this song Father God you're still our God Father in the, in the storm Father so be with us Lord God in Jesus name thank you Lord
Father, you are king over the flock. And I will be still and know you are God. When the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will show with you above the storm. Father, you are king. Over the flood, and I will be still and know you are God. One more time. When the oceans rise and the thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are King. Father God, in Jesus' name, Amen. Father God, amen. thank you, thank you. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, right, to, um, to all of you. And before I go to the message, I know that everyone is aware that the Philippines had been devastated by one of the strongest storms to hit the planet um, this year. So can I ask each and everyone to actually pause for a while? Right, and to pray for the Philippines, particularly um, the ones that were hard hit were uh, the Bicol region, um, Batangas, and Mindoro. Right, and so, um, but uh, all over the, I think um, right now uh, the the storm had weakened, the typhoon had weakened, right, but still, um, and when I was still in the Philippines. When I was still in the Philippines, I never heard that my whole time that I was there, right, uh, a lifetime almost, you know, and um, I never heard of signal number five, ever, right, and um, so, uh, and so, um, and this is reminiscent of uh, of Typhoon um, Yolanda, right. So right now, can I ask each and everyone? Right. If you are with your family, if you are with your family, can I ask one of you to pray and let us pray together? Right. For those who are here, get a partner. Right. And let's go to the Lord in prayer. Mm. Come on, get a partner.
Lord, we come to you, and again, Lord, we pray for the Philippines. Lord, we pray, Lord God, for the national government, and also, Lord God, the provincial governments. Lord, this is a double whammy because, Lord, um, COVID is still so active, Lord God, in the Philippines. We are again, Lord God, asking you for mercy and for grace. Lord God, for we know, Lord God, that those who are in um, evacuation areas, Lord, there's also the danger, Lord God, of catching COVID. So we come to you, Lord God, again, asking you, Lord God, I pray, Lord, for one thing. And may this lead, Lord God, Lord, our kababayans, Lord God, to really, Lord, put their faith, Lord God, in you. So I pray also, Lord God, for those, Lord God, who are believers. We pray that we will come together, Lord God, in order, Lord, to help, Lord, whichever way we can. We thank you, Lord God, again for today. And indeed, Lord God, we know that you are our sovereign God. Lord, in spite of this, Lord God, we trust you. And we put again, Lord God, in faith, our faith, Lord God, in you and you alone. Lord God, we know, Lord, that we can always look forward. Because this world is never, Lord God, our home. We're only passing through. Again, Lord God, today we pray that you're going, Lord, to be with us. As again, Lord God, we come together, Lord God, in worship. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So um, um, for those who are, and of course, uh, uh, um, alongside this, we are going to start a campaign for a fundraiser for um, the typhoon in the Philippines. All right. So... Um, if you are going to donate through Lightcast, all right. So, um, and I know that some of you who are who are giving your tithe, so separate it. Um, if you have to give to Typhoon Haiyan, all right. So separate. I mean Typhoon Haiyan, Typhoon um, Rolly, right? Um, specify Typhoon Rolly because um, we have a uh, Pastor Rolly. You might be, you might, you might mistake it for that. All right. So, um, put Typhoon Rolly, all right. So separate it from your regular tithes and offering. Right, so that is going to be specified, so we can actually easily check it. And um, so, um, actually, one of the um, um, there's there's a typhoon last week too. There was a storm in the Philippines that uh, actually uh, wreaked havoc in uh, Mindoro, and uh, we we actually promoted that in Power Up um, this past Wednesday that we are going to raise funds for that. But since uh, this came, so we are raising funds not only for Mindoro, but um, you know um, nationwide. So if you if the Lord God is going to touch you and you want to give through um, through Lightcast, all right? So, um, again, specify Typhoon Rolly, all right? So, it's um, on the screen. will be displayed now, right, the, where you can, where you can, uh, um, wh how you can give and where to. All right. So, again, we are in our, um, we are in our fifth message in the series next. And this is Seven Churches Part 3, right? And uh, we are going to talk about the dead church of Sardis, and the faithful church of Philadelphia. And again, are we at the end times? So what's going to happen next? So we have two churches that we're going to discuss today, and next week will be the last church, the church of uh, um, Laodicea. We're going to talk about that next week, and don't miss that because that church, Laodicea, is the church that we have today, right? But today we are going to discuss, right? So um, we had talked about the different churches and again, the way we approach this when we talk about the seven churches in Revelation, they really existed. The problems that were there, right? The problems that were written in the scriptures, the, the Lord's fault against them, right? Or the Lord's fault, um, the Lord faults them, you know? Um, and uh, the things that were written there, it really happened. But at the same time, this is also prophetic. Right, so um, in hindsight, now we can understand that these are the seven stages of the church in history. And last week we had seen, you know, um, last week we had seen the 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 
compromising church and the corrupt church, right? And today we are going to talk about, you know, the dead church and then the faithful church, right? So the first church is the dead church of Sardis. And let's see this video. In the book of Revelation, we are told of seven letters Jesus wrote to churches in what was then Asia Minor, an area now known as the country of Turkey. Located about 30 miles south of Thyatira was the city of Sardis. The city was located at the crossroads of some of the most important roads in Asia. This location made it one of the world's great trading centers and contributed to its great wealth. In fact, the first coinage ever to be minted in Asia was minted in Sardis. Some have said that Sardis was the place where modern money was born. Most noticeable in Sardis was the Acropolis, which rose about 800 feet above the north section of the city. It was protected by rock walls, which were nearly vertical, except on the south side. This made it a fortress that provided protection from invading armies. Only twice was it ever captured, though attacks on it were frequent. Each time it was captured, it was because guards had fallen asleep, leaving the city vulnerable to attack. This memory would be important to the church, where Jesus instructed John to write, Wake up! But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what time I will come to you. As with other cities, Sardis contained many temples to the gods it worshipped. In fact, Sardis had a temple to Diana that equaled the size of the famous temple of Artemis in Ephesus. However, the temple at Sardis was never finished. The city of Sardis was for many years wealthy beyond imagination, but this wealth also led to its downfall. The people became self-indulgent and self-satisfied. Its citizens were known for combining wild sexual orgies with their worship of heathen gods. One historian summed up ancient Sardis this way, No city in the whole province of Asia had a more splendid history than Sardis. No city of Asia at that time showed such a melancholy contrast between past splendor and present decay as Sardis. Its history was the exact opposite of Smyrna. Smyrna was dead and yet lived. Sardis lived and was dead. While the church in Sardis seemed healthy on the outside, on the inside she was dead. The church had become like the city in which she resided. The church, which was once vibrant and effective, had become lazy and ineffective. Impressed with her past, the church was not alert to face the challenges of the present or the future. It was to this church that Jesus wrote, To the angel of the church in Sardis write, These are the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. Wake up. Strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your deeds complete in the sight of my God. Remember, therefore, what you have received and heard, obey it and repent. But if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what time I will come to you. Yet you have a few people in Sardis who have not soiled their clothes. They will walk with me, dressed in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes will, like them, be dressed in white. I will never blot out his name from the book of life, but will acknowledge his name before my Father and his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who has an ear... Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches, right? And again, the way we see this, right, from the very beginning, the church in Ephesus, even though it existed during the time, and even though it was part of the, that history is the early church, and then the next one, right, and the church of Smyrna, 
right? And uh, the persecuted church, even though it existed during the time, right? And then, and again, through history, the persecuted church, right? That had happened through centuries until the 300, um, 300 80s, right? Um, 300s AD, right? And the next one is again, um, last week, uh, we understood again the, the compromising church and the, the corrupted church. And after that, the Reformation had happened, and today we are talking about the Church of Sardis, right? So um, other people call that, that um, Reformation as Protestantism, right? By the way, just a note, to take note, right? So here's, a, actually, I, 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 was, I didn't, I, didn't um, I wasn't able to expound on that more, right? There were remnants, right, among Christianity that didn't go through this history, right? What do I mean? They didn't go through the mainstream or the mainline or the mainline, um, um, the mainline, uh, uh, the main Christian line during the time, right? When we talk about, so here are these some of the terms that we need to understand. One is Christendom, right? Christendom, the meaning of that, this is those who are um, professing belief in the Lord Jesus Christ, but not necessarily that they believe in the Trinity or they believe that Jesus Christ is God. Right, so when we talk about Christendom, anybody that is actually saying that they are that they are they believe in Christ, and for example, some of these uh, uh, some of these um, you know that are not mainline. Um, uh, what uh, um, for example is a uh, uh, right now um, the the Mormons, all right, of the the what do you call them, the Latter Day Saints, right? So that's uh, that's how they call themselves. Right, the Iglesia Ni Cristo, the Jehovah's Witnesses, right? So these are like, you know, not necessarily that they believe that Jesus Christ is God, but they are part of Christendom. When we talk about Christianity in a sense that we are talking about, you know, the, the classic Christianity is those who believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They believe that God, the Lord Jesus Christ, is God the Son, and that He became human and all that. All right, so, um, and then he died on the cross of Calvary as God and man. All right, so, um, and then he resurrected on the third day and all of the other doctrines that we believe in. Now, right, and um, there's like a remnant during the time that had coursed through, right, that didn't go through the main line, that didn't go through the compromising church and the corrupted church, right, in the, along that line. And um, we believe that Baptist. Right? That's why all other Protestant religions, I mean, uh, other Protestant denominations, I mean, they have founders. But if you're going to go, you know, if you're going to look at where Baptists had come from, you're going to have a hard time. Right? Because through history, these are like remnants, small groups, right, that went through history. And that's why, right, um, the Presbyterians have Calvin, um, the Lutherans have Luther, right, the Methodists have Wesley. Right, um, but uh, well, um, Wesley was not considered a, a um, you know, a, a from the one of the reformers because he, he came in a little bit later, right? But, um, right, so you are not going to find somebody who had founded the Baptist, all right? By the way, I also don't believe that we came from John the Baptist, right? So that's also not right. Um, we so the Baptist actually, you're going to see like these small packets of a. Uh, of, uh, of um, believers that went through history and actually one of the part of the history of the Baptists is the Anabaptists. Why were we called Baptists? Because we baptized by immersion. That's why, so it's like Christians being called Christians. Christians didn't name themselves Christians. It was the people outside that named them Christians. The same way with Baptists. We were not, not named by, we didn't name ourselves Baptists. We were called Baptists by those who are around us because we baptized through immersion. Right, so that's it through history. Now, what happened was, so reformation happened. Remember, the objective of, particularly of Martin Luther, who actually pinned, and actually that was yesterday. Martin Luther's uh, reformation day was yesterday, right? Um, yeah, the same day as Halloween, right? So he posted the 95 theses, right? He nailed it. It was not meant to start a new religion. It was meant to put in reforms, right? One of the things that Martin Luther was against were the indulgences, right? He was against the indulgences. And what do we mean by indulgences? It is now the belief that, you know, that I can offer something in order for those that I love who already passed away. So I'll put on, 
I'll, I'll, I'll pay in order for them to, to do something in tribute to that person. And eventually this person slowly will go to heaven. Right? That system was actually so abused during the time. And so the 95 Theses that um, um, Luther wrote was not, again, not to get out, right? But rather to reform. But what happened was, but what happened was, of course, he was a, um, he, he was a, he was judged that he was a, um, what you call that, a, a cursed, right? He was excommunicated. So that's where it all started. But before Luther, right? Before Luther, there were already clergy, right? There were already, you know, a group of, you know, religious leaders, priests, and nuns during the time that were saying that there was something wrong within the church, right? And so they protested. But here's the thing. The Lord God said, so let's go in what the Bible says. The Lord God said, this thing says, he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. When you talk about, are there seven Holy Spirits? No, the meaning of this is sevenfold. Right? The meaning of that, seven is the number of perfection. So the meaning of this, you know, that we have the, uh, the, this talking about the completeness and the perfection of the Holy Spirit. Right? So here, um, so there are seven spirits? No. And let's look at Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 to 2 for us to understand this more. In seven, the seven spirits of God can be seen in Isaiah 11, 1 to 2. The Lord God, the Lord God says, There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse. So this is the lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesse is the father of David. So from the line of David, the line of Jesse, came the Lord Jesus Christ. And then it says here, so this is Isaiah. This was written a long time before the Lord Jesus Christ was born. And then it says, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Then look at what it says. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Did you see that? The spirit of the Lord, spirit of wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, and fear of the Lord. So those are the seven spirits. Right? Now, he talks to the church in Sardis and told them. Right? Again, um, um, the, uh, during the first message, we talked about the seven stars. Right? And... Uh, this is talking about the seven churches, right? Um, it could be, you know, an angel, an angel to them, or it could be just the ministers or the pastors of these churches, right? So the Lord God says, I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive. So they have a name or a reputation. They are named. They have a name that you are alive, but you are dead, man, right? So they, during this time, right, they went away. By the way, the name, the meaning of the name Sardis the meaning of that, etymological meaning of that, it means prince of joy, right? It means um, escape, escaping. It means remnants, those who were left behind, right? So if you're going to see at that juncture in church history, this is it, right? There was actually when it started, there was joy because now they are they went back to the scriptures. And during the time, during this time, the seven solas were uh, the seven solas, the five solas were actually crafted. And one of those is scriptures alone. Scriptures alone. That we the the the, the authority for the authority for faith and practice should always be based on the Bible alone. That's the meaning of that. That the Bible is sufficient for us to know what to believe about God. And what to be to what to know about life, and that is the source of our faith and practice. So that's that's what happened there. So there was joy. Remember, when we and during the time the printing press was invented, right at that time. Can you imagine? It is God's time. If you're going to think about it, so the Bible started getting printed because before this, everybody was writing, right? Was writing every. That's why books were expensive during the time, and not a lot of people can read. But because, because of the invention of the printing press, which happened during the time, so also the printing of the Bible got widespread. So people started having a copy of the written word of God. Right? So there was joy. There was joy. Have you seen this, this, uh, this video of a tribe that they were actually waiting for a plane to come and everybody, they were cheering. Now everybody was cheering, right? And they were like, a, some of them were holding something and they were making noise. And then finally the plane, 
landed and everybody was shouting in glee. You know what was what was what is in that plane? What was in that plane? They are Bibles written in their own dialect. Right? You should see that. Why? <laughs> they are that excited. And during the time, people were excited because they have the word of the Lord God. It seems that they were alive, but what happened? But you were dead, the Lord God told them. Right? Eventually, through the years, right? Through the years, this, this actually, you know, it's, um, the, the expanse of this, expanse of this is actually not just a century. It went through centuries. But what happened was, what happened was, afterwards, they forgot. And look at the, the next one that the Lord God said. To be watchful and strengthen. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. That was their name. That are ready to die. So the things that they let up on, right? What happened? They started to die. Right? So does this mean that this church is already dead? No. Maybe the meaning of this is that they are dying. But they were passionless. They were lifeless. They were doing things, right? They were doing things for the ministry, but there was no passion. The reason why they are doing things, they forgot about it. So they were mechanical, right? They were mechanical. And then the Lord God says, Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. So this... This is how God faults them. God faults them for, number one, they were not watchful. They were not watchful. How? How, you know? They also became the very thing they went out from. They escaped from one thing, right? And because they have realized that the practices were wrong, the things that believe were already corrupted, it, they were already compromised, but the very thing that they went against, they became the same thing. How? Because eventually, they started departing from God's word again. But those who were doing, th th those who were believing in this, eventually, you know, um, some of this, right, prominent, prominent pastors, prominent teachers, because this so happened also at the age of enlightenment, at this part. And so some of this started also, questioning the validity of the scriptures, right? Here's what we believe. Here's what we believe. Here it is. What do you believe? The Bible doesn't contain the Word of God. Now, let me repeat that. The Bible does not contain the Word of God. The Bible is the Word of God. There's a big difference there, right? The Bible, everything that is in the scriptures, we're talking about, of course, the original copies, which we don't have. What we have are translations. What we have are copies, right? So, but here's the thing. Here's the thing, right? The word of the Lord God, the word of the Lord God is inspired, right? God breathed, right? And is, and is profitable is for the benefit of those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, those who believe in the Lord God, right? The scriptures is profitable again. It is the basis of our faith, in the basis of our practice, right? So what happened then? Eventually, they departed from this. It had become, they departed from a wrong, they're thinking that this was wrong beliefs and practice. This was religious. This is about just rituals and not about God. But eventually, Protestantism drifted. Drifted. It had become not about God anymore, right? We're not saying everyone, Right? But look at what the Lord God said, because there were still those who remain. Don't let it die, the Lord God said. The Lord God told them, don't let it die. Right? So eventually, the Lord God said in verse 4, you have a few names even in Sardis who have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out, blot out, blot out his name from the book of life. Again, I mentioned earlier that it says there, the Lord God said, you have a name that you were alive, right? In other versions, it's reputation. But again, right, at the end, the Lord God again mentioned name, right? Here's what the Lord God had told us, right? Be glad, 
that your name is written down in glory. The promise of the Lord God, the Lord God told them, for those who were the remnants, those who were overcomers, the Lord God told them that your name will no way be blotted out of the book of life. And here's another thing in verse in verse uh, um, in that uh, verse 5 at the latter part of that, he said, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Remember what the Lord Jesus Christ said? Right? If you deny me in front of men, I will also deny you in front of my father. Hmm. Right? So what's the meaning of this? If you are a real believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you are going to have the guts. You are going to have, you are going to have the, the courage to proclaim the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in front of everyone. That actually leads us to the next church. Right? That actually leads us to the next church. But let me again point this out. All right? Point, it out. point this out. Not because, not because we are doing things for the Lord. That they are valid before the Lord. Right? You might be alive. That our church is alive. Right? If you're going to think about it, right? Um, and looking online, we are doing a lot of things. But beware, church. Because if we are doing the things that we are doing for the heck of it, right, it becomes an act. And you know what the Lord God had called, right, what God had called those who are doing things, but they are not being done for God's glory, right? They are doing it for different purposes. The Bible calls them actors. It's all an act. It's showbiz. It's showbiz. And what's the meaning of that? Right? Another word for that is hypocrites. It's all an act. And you know, the Lord God is telling us our the things that we are doing before God, they are dead. Hmm. The Lord God said this. Right? If you say that you have if you say that you have faith, but you don't have works, right? So where you put your mouth, where you put your mouth on, but it doesn't show it's not from the heart, and it's not showing up in your actions, that is hypocrisy. The Lord God said, that's dead, right? It's vain. So those of us, right, what happened was people had become religious. But it's not about their relationship with God. That we had become about rituals. We pray, we read the scriptures, we do all these things, but our hearts are far from God. All right. So again, so what do we do? The Lord God said, right, where you had gotten out from, do not go back there. But then the Lord God said, repent. And remember how you have received and heard. Hold fast and repent. Hold fast and repent. If you had not taken the glory of the Lord God, right, seriously, it's time for us, church, to repent. That's the meaning of this. So, by the way, after this, there, are, there were remnants. And after this, after this period, then we had the Church of Philadelphia, the faithful church. What happened during this time? And I'm excited to talk about this, but let's see this video first. In the book of Revelation, we are told of seven letters Jesus wrote to churches in what was then Asia Minor an area now known as the country of Turkey. The sixth of these letters was addressed to the city of Philadelphia. Located 28 miles southeast of Sardis, this city was a border town sitting at the borders of three countries. The road from Europe to the east came through Philadelphia, making it the gateway from one continent to another. This city was founded by King Attalus of Pergamum, who loved his brother so much that he was called Philadelphos, which means one who loves his brother. It was after him that the city was named. Because of its geography, the city of Philadelphia was founded as a doorway of opportunity to spread the Greek culture and language to lands in the East. It did so well in its task that by 19 AD, one of its neighboring countries had forgotten their own language and were all but Greeks. This also gave the church a strategic opportunity to fulfill God's mission for them, to be an open door spread the gospel to the surrounding area. Philadelphia was built on the edge of a great volcanic area, which brought it great prosperity because it was one of the most fertile areas in the world. It was a great grape-growing area 
and Philadelphia was world famous for its vintages and its wines. It was also known for its hot springs, which brought many people to the city to bathe in its medicinal waters. But that which brought prosperity to Philadelphia also brought danger. Because it was built near a volcanic area, the city was in constant danger of earthquakes. One earthquake, 17 AD, was so powerful that it destroyed Sardis and ten other cities, including Philadelphia. The aftershocks continued in Philadelphia for years, causing many to live in constant fear. Tiberius, the Roman emperor, was generous to the city and contributed to its rebuilding. In gratitude, the residents temporarily changed the name of the city to Neo Caesarea, which means the new city of Caesar. Therefore, the people of the city knew what it meant to receive a new name. To the Christians in this city, Jesus promised to give his name for their faithfulness in serving him, even in a land filled with worship of the Greek gods. It was to this church that Jesus wrote a letter filled with hope and encouragement. To the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. I will make those who are of the synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jews, though they are not, but are liars. I will make them come and fall down at your feet and acknowledge that I have loved you. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take your crown. Him who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will he leave it. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem which is coming down out of heaven from my God, and I will also write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, This thing says, He who is holy, who is true, that is the name of our Lord God. Right? The meaning of the name of the Lord God, he is faithful and true. Right? And he who has the key of David, he opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. This is talking about, again, the key of David. Again, the Lord Jesus Christ came from that lineage. Now in Revelation 1.18, we see, I am he who lives. And was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. For Jesus Christ had resurrected from the dead. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of death. Right? In verse 8, the Lord God said, I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door. So the Lord Jesus Christ now, you know, we have seen about the name, right, uh, was, uh, was uh, mentioned in a, in a, in the book, uh, I mean, for the church of Sardis, and here the Lord God is talking about doors. So what's the meaning of that? The Lord Jesus Christ actually said that I am the door, right? And the meaning of that, that if we are going to have eternal life, we have to go through the door, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's talking about, again, eternal salvation. And look at what the Lord Jesus Christ had said. He said, he who, he who opens, no one can shut, right? And he, and if he shuts, no one can open. Right? So, again, the Lord God is telling us that our salvation is secured in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not dependent on what you have done. Right? It is the, our salvation depends on what the Lord Jesus Christ had done. Right? So, just imagine if it's dependent on what you can do. Just imagine after you had received the Lord Jesus Christ, the next day you're not saved again. Right? Because I don't know about you. Right? I... Uh, and um, every day, I commit sin, right? It might not be, you know, we are not thinking about the big sins, right? Do you know that the Bible actually, here's one favorite sin among us Filipinos, chismis. You know, the Lord God actually equates gossip 
right? It was mentioned in a line, it was equated with murder. Mm -hmm. Right? And we see, oh, it's only chismes. Or oh, here's another one, liar, lying. Right? No, chismes not the not the the not the spread. Right? Yeah, well, chismes also getting spread, right? Bad things, right? Not something that you eat. But there's also lying. We are we we are familiar with white lies, and we think that this is okay. It is all right before the Lord God. These are sins, and you know if it's dependent on us to maintain or to be for us to be saved and for us to maintain our salvation, man, maybe me. The same day that I have received the Lord Jesus Christ, I had already fallen. I, have, I would not be saved again. But praise the Lord God, because our salvation is not dependent on our performance, it's dependent on what the Lord Jesus Christ had done. That's why he says, by grace are you saved through faith. Not of yourselves, not of works, lest anyone should boast. But our works after we got saved matters. And here's what's really wonderful about the Church of Philadelphia. So after this, when... And during the time that Reformation happened, and you know, so there's like factions in the in in Christendom, right? So so many so many uh, denominations that started, but what one of the things that was wrong in the, that period of Sardis? Here's what happened. The very thing that the Protestants actually went against, because during the time the national religion of Rome right, was uh, Roman Catholicism, but that's one of the things that they, that had been compromised, but what happened? Eventually, even Protestants had become, had, had uh, what you call that, had, had, uh, had become uh, condoning when it comes to being the national religion, and one of those churches that were founded, if you are familiar with that, is the Church of England, that's why it's called the Church of England, Right? So, and eventually, um, if you are not part of that religion, you get persecuted. That's the reason why, that's the reason why the pilgrims left the United, uh, the, uh, the pilgrims left England, right? In order to go to find a new found land, right? So that's the reason why they went here for the pilgrims. But the pilgrims also forgot something, right? They, instead of bringing the gospel and loving those who were around them, right? Eventually, the, 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 so it's not necessarily the original pilgrims, but those who had followed, right? In colonizing the United States of America, what happened was those who were around them, right? That there were, we, 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 you know history, that it was not really a great time for the, for the natives, right? So they forgot that too. But eventually, we thank the Lord God because... There was a movement. The remnants from Sardis started to really taking the word of God seriously. And it so happened also that it went with the age of discovery. Right? It was during the time, you know, that, uh, um, you know, that um, travel had become easier through ships and all that. But here, the Lord God said, for you have, the Lord God said, for you have a little strength. The meaning of that, there are like a small number of people. Right, who were there. And if you're going to look later, we're going to see that video, how Christianity had spread through years, right, through the centuries, and then it went down, right, it dissipated, and then during this time, it spread out again. Spread out again. And look at what the Lord God told them. You have not denied my name. You have kept my word, and you have not denied my name. Right? In verse 9, Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie, Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you. And during the time, even those who were deceiving, right? Well, in, in particular, in Philadelphia, there, were, there was a group that was like this. And they got exposed, but they started repenting. And all throughout the world, all throughout the world, right, the, this is what happened. The missionary movement started. The missionary movement had started. Right? And one of, my, one of my heroes in the faith is George Mueller. Right? Yep. George Mueller, you know, had prayed and he wanted to become a missionary, but the Lord God had called him actually to take care of street kids, of orphans. He, he, he had prayed 
other route. And one of the things that is really great, he had taken care of 4,000 children all throughout his lifetime. Right? And what was the objective in doing that? Not only to take care of them physically, not only to provide education for them, but for them to be discipled. 4,000 kids. Right? And alongside this movement, um, there are people that you're going to, um, you might not be familiar with, uh, you might not be familiar with some of them, right? Um, um, David Briner, right? Um, William Carey. So these people, they were known. They were known to be, to be um, missionaries. This was the first time that people got out, right? Left their home and went into a, another culture in order to preach the gospel. By the way, um, bef- what happened during the time, there, was, there were happenings in, during the period of Sardis that somehow, somehow made people repent because there was a big earthquake that had happened during the time. And there was actually a, uh, um, a uh, what you call that, a phenomenon that the sun had darkened, right, at one time. And people started remembering what the word of the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ taught. Them. So they thought that this might be the last times, right? So there was a revival in the church during the time. So the missionary movement, and not only that, at this part, right, the Lord God told them, Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet, and listen to, to this, and to know that I have loved you, right? And during this moment, right, um, I, I believe the best way to understand the providence, the power, you know, and the protection of the Lord is when we are doing missional and missionary work, Right? The the stories that I have heard, the wonderful stories that I have heard, most of them, right, around 90% of how they had seen that God had worked, that if God hadn't worked, it would have been impossible, are through missionaries, are through missionaries. Just for example, you know, again, George Mueller might not be the kind of the missionary that, that we are thinking of, right, but George Mueller, right, he had this familiar story that one day they didn't have any supplies anymore. Thousands of kids were waiting for food. That day they didn't have enough money for breakfast. So they prayed. So the kids were already there and they prayed, Lord God, thank you for the bread and thank you for the milk. Right? George Mueller was barely done with his prayer. There was a knock on the door. Right? Somebody who was delivering bread, right? Somebody who was delivering bread, right? Thought of them because they had excess, so they gave it to them that morning. And here's actually the more wonderful part, right? Another knock on the door, right? After that, right? And here's a guy who was supposed to be delivering milk, gallons of milk. And what happened, right? His wheel, right? Um, um, His wheel got detached, so his cart got broken in front, in front of the orphanage. So instead of spoiling the milk, they give it to them, right? And these stories like that, right, they happen. I have seen and I have heard, you know, how missionaries are talking about those. One pastor that I know, he had prayed, Lord God. So he asked his children during Christmas time, right? Missionaries don't have a lot of money, right? Most of them, they're there are some who has, right? But most of them do not have, right? So this pastor had prayed and asked his children, so what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? And they prayed, you know, and they prayed. And when they opened their eyes, there were actually like food. The ones that they asked for by the door, apparently one of their members came, right? Bringing food. But when he saw them praying, so he got, you know, he got shy of disturbing them in their prayer. So he just put the food there. And one of those, that were, the two of those that were really specific is spaghetti. In the Philippines during the time, spaghetti is food, for, is food for those who are rich, right? Spaghetti and fried chicken. Mm. Now that's a combination, what, number six? 
chicken joint spaghetti. <laughs> right? So, so here the Lord God is telling you, that the Lord God is telling us, and I will show and know that I have loved you. People who were opposed, people who were actually, you know, masked, but eventually repentance happens. So what is, how does God fault, how did God fault the church in Philadelphia? God faults them for nothing. Say it with me, nothing. All right? And the Lord God says, because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. Remember, right, during this time, Philadelphia was at a fault line, and every time there's an earthquake, everybody gets out of the city. That's the picture of that. They were not stable. And during this time also, in the history of the church, right, in the history of the church, they were actually going out. Going out, going out, right? So, but the Lord God is saying that one day they don't have to go out of the cities anymore. Where they, um, so they were like from, from different places and they're going to be missionaries to different countries. So it's not going to happen anymore what the Lord God said. But rather, I will, this is what the Lord God said. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I will write on him my new name, right? God's reward for him who overcomes. Listen to this. Number one, imperishable crown in verse 11. Right? The Lord God said, right, no one may take your crown. And look at what the Lord God said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 25. And everyone who competes for the price is temperate in all things. Now they do it for, to obtain a perishable crown. He's talking about the Olympics. Right? He's talking about, you know, um, you know the, the, those who were um, competing, you know, athletes. They only get the olive, what do you call that? olive branch, right, with leaves as their crown. Can you imagine? Right, olive wreath. There you go. The olive wreath. And they, that's going to be, that's going to, um, that's going to fade, in, you know, in, in a few days. Right, but the Lord God said, but the crown that I'm giving you, the Lord God said, as you persevere, as you finish, the Lord God said, they will not perish. And now the next one in First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 19, here's another thing. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at His coming? Listen up. Right? So who, what are these crowns for? These are the crowns for those who persevere and those who are actually doing the great work of partnering with God to do the great commission. Right? The crown of rejoicing is for those people who are involved in evangelism to proclaim the word of the Lord God wherever and look at the reward again the next thing is the names will be written on him who overcomes look here and you know how god takes his name seriously right that the lord god said that we need to glorify god's name and his glory he will not give to another right have you seen do you see the implications of all this but look at what the lord god had told the church in philadelphia Names will be written on him. Number one, the name of God. Number two, the name of the city of God, the new Jerusalem. This new Jerusalem is going to come down. We're going to have another message for that. Right? One full message for that about the new heaven, the new Jerusalem, the new earth. Right? We're going to talk about that. But this new Jerusalem is going to be now. And look at what the Lord God said. Right? I will write on him the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. Yeah. So wait for that. I'm going to explain that more. When we talk about that new heaven and new earth, right? And then look at what the Lord God, the Lord Jesus Christ said, and I will write on him my new name. So what is this new name? We don't know yet, right? But we know that the Lord Jesus Christ have different titles, right? The Lord Jesus Christ is telling him for him who overcomes. This is it, right? So in verse 13, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And I have, we have, there's this video that had shown how Christianity from the very start and until three years ago. So let's see this video.
Brothers and sisters in the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ had said, this particular one, that when the gospel is already spread out, when His gospel is already spread out to all nations, right? He's not talking about countries. He's talking about people groups. Then He will come, right? We here in Lightcast, right? We here in Lightcast, and I pray again for those who have been with us, worshiping with us for, for quite a while, and if you're not part of any church, that you might consider to be part of Lightcast too, because Lightcast is about this. Lightcast is about right, leading people to live faithful, to, live, uh, to become faithful and fruitful followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, who will lead others also. Right? What are we about? We are about winning souls, about loving God, loving people, right? And how do we love people? By winning souls and making disciples, right? Our main, our main thrust is this, right? It is to change the world one soul at a time, right? It is to change the world one soul at a time, right? There were two churches that the Lord God didn't have fault against. That is the church of Smyrna, the persecuted church, right? And the church of Philadelphia, which is the faithful church. And I believe, right? I believe in this, right? Persecution still happens. And you know, it's not far that it can also happen. Right? You, you in the Philippines... You are free to worship. We here in the United States, we are free to worship. But again, before as the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is nearing, and let me tell you, persecution might come again. But here's the thing that I am looking forward to. Because we are praying again for revival. During the church in Philadelphia, right, at the onset of that, revival had happened. My friends, my brothers and sisters, Right? It is time again for a revival. Here's what the Lord God is telling us. And again, I invite you tonight for the, for the, for the last day of, of um, our seven, Ignite 714. Here's what the Lord God said. If my people, that's you and me, who are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and we really need to take God seriously in the things that we do for the Lord God, we cannot take that lightly, right? right? We know that we are God's children, but remember that the one we serve and the one, our Father is the King, right? And the Lord God is telling us, humble themselves and pray, seek my face, and turn away from their wicked ways. We cannot take God lightly anymore. And look at what he said. And I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their sins. Then, church, may the Lord find us faithful. And that's our message for today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Sabi po sa Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. God loves a cheerful giver. So as we give today, we will give faithfully and do it with a smile. Our digital giving is now available through Zelle, Venmo, Cash App, and PayPal at lightcast.nyc at gmail.com or you can hand it in to your cell group leader after gathering. For more information, you can send us a message here in our Lightcast Facebook page. Thank you! Shake it together and run it over Give and it will come back to you When you give, give to the Lord Give and it will come back to you 
good measure, rest down, shake it together, and run it over, give, and it will come back to you when you give, give to the Lord. Give it faith, give it joy, and a smile on your face. Give us the Lord has given to you. How you give is a reflection of your gratitude. Oh, give, and it will come back to you. Good measure, press down, shake it together, and run it over. Give, and it will come back to you. When you give, give to the Lord. When you give, give to the Lord. When you give, give to the Lord. Thank you for worshiping with us today. And church, we have some couple of announcements, so don't, don't just stay there. And uh, starting off, our prayer dawn that happens every Monday through Friday at 5 in the morning Eastern time. So there will be an adjustment for the Philippines. I know we have uh, prayer donors also in the Philippines. So please, we will be uh, starting in the Philippines. It's going to be 6 p.m. Okay, 6 p.m., but 5 a.m. here in the Philippines. In the U.S. Oh, in the U.S. <laughs> in the U.S. And also cell group. Cell group happens once a week. We have cell groups in all different ages from age 8, eight. can you believe, up to 108. <laughs> <laughs> that happens once a week because we here in Lightcast, we grow together as a team, as a family. So we do not grow by ourselves alone. We do it in cell group, okay? So again, uh, if you're not part of any cell group, please contact those people or the people that invited you here or message us in Lightcast page and we will get back to you. Surely, we will reply. Next is Lightcast Sparks. So, Lightcast Sparks is our children's ministry. So, they are gathering every Sunday at 1 p.m. And then, early, um, earlier, we mentioned that Ignite 714, tonight is the last night to pray for our nation. So, make sure you alarm. You put your alarm at 7, and then seven by 714, we will definitely pray all together. And lastly, don't forget to take a selfie or a groupie and, and send it to Lightcast Facebook page or to your cell leaders. Yes, okay. So don't forget to take a picture because we want to see your beautiful faces. It's a great encouragement to all of us. So again, church, before we say goodbye, let's close in prayer. Okay, let's pray. Lord, our Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day, this beautiful time together that we can worship you. Again, Lord, before you, we are nothing. So, Lord, let us always be reminded how glorious you are, are how holy you are, so that in the time that we will still be spending in this earth, Father God, that we will not lose that passion, that we will uh, continue to be reminded and be motivated because of our love for you. So, in everything that we do, may we always do it for your glory and for your glory alone and i pray for each and every one who are here that we will have a blessed week we will continue to bless others we will continue to win the world one soul at a time in jesus name we pray amen, amen. Again, have a blessed week and, and we'll see you see again you. next week yes bye